and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, uh, I would like to review this book here called um, Fairies, A Dangerous History by Richard Sugg. I read this book recently. Um, Aesthetic-wise, um, it obviously comes under the fairy core hashtag. Um, also a little bit cottage core as well. Um, you may recall that I'm like majorly into both fairy core and cottage core. So I really wanted to review this book. Um, it's called, as I say, it's called Fairies: A Dangerous History, and it's really sort of taking a kind of. Um, a, it, it's looking at uh, the history of fairies, how they're portrayed in um, sort of folk mythology. Um, how people have seen fairies throughout the ages and far from fairies being the sort of prettified um, Disney creations that many people are used to nowadays um, historically fairies were anything but they were not pretty they were not um, you know cute and pink and all the things that Disney makes fairies to be they were actually to be feared and it was actually considered to be more dangerous not to believe in fairies than to believe in them. Um, these were... Fairies were to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, they could cause all sorts of mischief in people's imaginations. I thought it was a really interesting book. So I'd just like to kind of um, just draw upon some of the things that I thought most interesting that I wrote down. Um, so... One of the earliest beliefs about fairies, very interestingly, was that they were considered to be fallen angels, um, but not considered to be quite as guilty as Satan, but they were considered to be, um, yeah, basically not, not, not fit for heaven, as it were. So they were fallen angels, um, and, they were all, and, and they were mainly, and fairies were thought to mainly live um, underground, uh, that is a little bit closer to the underworld, for example, under hills, uh, caves, um, places like that. They, they weren't often depicted with wings originally. The addition of wings was a later, more like, Victorian sort of invention, really. Um, yeah, they were considered to be sort of present yet hidden and to live a very kind of secretive uh, existence. Most fairies were also not considered to be tiny. Um, in actual fact, some fairies were considered to be relatively big, like up to around sort of like four foot, even four foot taller, sometimes in some cases even taller than that. So they weren't always considered to be really, really tiny. Um, fairies could, um, could change form, for example, into seals, into flies, into foxes. Shape shifting was common, as I believe. Um, and as I said, very few traditional fairies had wings. And they were also slightly more likely to be male, which is interesting as well. Um, and their language was considered to be that of music, singing or twittering like birds. Fairies were considered to be middle people, similar yet different from human beings. In Ireland, fairies were known as the gentry, which kind of shows the sort of like level of respect that people um, directed towards fairies because of the belief that fairies needed to be respected because you wouldn't want to get on the wrong side of them. So they were called the gentry as a, as a sign of respect. Like they were considered almost to be like aristocrats, really. Um, yeah, fairies were considered to be a very powerful force, so you needed to compliment, compliment them. Good people, fair folk, the gentry. Fairies were considered to represent the unrestrained it, the sort of boisterous selfishness almost of children. Uh, also of interest was the fairy wing. Um, there was a great fear around fairy wings, like children are told to be very careful because you wouldn't want to fall into a fairy ring so you don't know what might happen. And of course, I didn't know back then that fairy rings is actually a natural phenomenon. They are caused by one of many fungi in soil that releases nitrogen. And that, so you may see brightly coloured mushrooms and some very old mushrooms spring up in sometimes in just one night. Um, so yeah, some mushrooms might spring up in just one night. And sorry, some, some of the fairy rings are, are also considered to be very old. Um, but the fact that mushrooms could sometimes be seen to just like spring up in one night sort of made people very sort of lent force to people's sort of supernatural beliefs so it seemed quite like miraculous you know 
and, and obviously think a fairy circle being round, you know, and obviously a circle is a very magical shape. And fairies danced there, and also fairies could snatch children away if they stepped in one. Um, now, there are many um, sort of myths around so-called uh, fantasy islands, like um, there's an island called Ladra Island, there's the Isle of Youth. Um, these sort of myths around islands are very common. There was also uh, a widespread belief in uh, fairy doctors. Uh, many claim to have actually um, met the fairies, and others claim to be fairies. And these people, those who claim to have either met the fairies or to be fairies, were considered to be sort of purveyors of fairy wisdom, and they were called fairy doctors. And some of them assumed kind of sort of healing abilities, a little bit like uh, witches did as well. Um, yeah, amateur healers, um, but, but, but some were outright con artists, however. Some abused it and not claimed to be a fairy doctor just to get money or influence. So there's a lot of fraudulence going on there as well. Um, another common belief, uh, particularly in the north, was in seal women. Uh, because seals can actually look eerily human. And the seal song is very, very eerie. And... Um, uh, seals were held to, re to reassume human form in the form of women at night. And then we also have leprechauns, of course, little men in red who, ha who um, have treasures. There are many, many different fairies. Um, but yeah, our leprechauns I always find quite interesting. <laughs> little men in red. Um, fairies were also often referenced in uh, witch trials as well, interestingly. For example, the Joan of Arc was actually tried as a heretic rather than a witch, but the, but the latter association um, is what you know is what clung to her. Um, but she was originally really tried as a heretic. Um, and interestingly, in Sicily, one type of witch was the female fairy doctor. So there's a lot of overlap there. And this was known as the Donna di Fuori. I don't know if I pronounced it right. The Gadonna di Fuori, which means woman from outside. Fairies were considered to be sources of dark power for witches. And children were scared of fairies because fairies could take children. In, in Celtic territories, fairies stole babies, especially boys. And interestingly, especially those with blue eyes and fair hair. They would then leave a fairy substitute in place. The changeling. People rendered everything they could to make fairies reverse switch, so parents would then abuse the children to get sent, because there was a sense that fairies cared enough about their offspring to rescue them from such abuses and restore one's child. This, um, it, it, this often happened, by the way, um, in a case of an initially normal baby that then begins um, to seem suspect. For example, cries, fails to grow, walk or talk, constantly hungry. And there's this belief that the child is not yours, the child has been stolen. You had known your own baby, and this now was not him. And I, and I do wonder, I think a lot of these children were probably autistic or had other developmental conditions that obviously they didn't know about back then. Um, so this belief in changelings, you know, was very common. It was a way of kind of feeling more in control if your child wasn't quite like the other children, particularly if they had seemed, in inverted commas, normal at first, which I feel, feel was quite interesting. Parents would often go to great lengths to try and make sure their children weren't snatched away by the fairies. For example, they might place a Bible under the child's pillow to prevent theft. And the invading fairy was exorcised by burning with irons. But of course, sadly, the child then would die. So there was a great deal of child abuse that went on because the parents believed, sincerely believed that their children were not theirs anymore. Um, now, one benefit of a changeling belief is that it actually shifted blame uh, into into a separate supernatural realm uh, beyond human control so it allowed people to shift from being helpless victims to the active competence of problem and it gave them a sort of it gave an arbitrary condition a meaning okay so i'm going to move on to video number two now to carry on this uh, whistle stop tour of fairies a dangerous history so moving on to video number two now